Today is a good day. I found all the information on my giant tune port intake test. Who wants to see 10 different intakes compared to the factory L98? I even threw in a carbureted intake. Check it out. In this video, we've got a giant tune port intake shootout. We're going to compare the factory L98 intake to 10 aftermarket induction systems on a 383 stroker. So why choose a 383 to compare the factory tune port intake? Well, for a number of reasons. First of all, I wanted a combination that would tax the flow rate of the factory tune port and the other aftermarket long run intakes. I also needed a combination that would work equally well with what I call the medium length runners, like the Super Ram and SLP intake. But it also had to work well with the short runner stuff, like the Mini Ram and the Stealth Ram. So I needed a, a test motor that would work well with all of these combinations. That's why we chose a 383. Now this particular test motor was, as I said, a 383 stroker. It was somewhere near 10 to 1. I don't know exactly what it was, and the owner of the motor who worked for Westec doesn't know exactly what it was either. It was a flat top piston with Airflow Research heads and a healthy comp cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. And truth be told, if I was putting together a 350 or a 383 to run with one of these long runner L98 TPI setups, I probably wouldn't pick this cam. I would pick something milder. There's no reason to have a camshaft that wants to make peak power at 6,500 RPM when the rest of the long runner intake signs off well before that. But as I said, this test motor had to work well with three different style intake manifolds, so it worked out pretty well. Let's find out how your favorite did. Check it out. Obviously the best starting point was a factory tune port L98 induction system for this test. Let's get right into it. This is our 383 with the healthy comp cam and the airflow research heads. This thing was somewhere near 10 to 1, and uh, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what it was because this was a long ago, and this was not my test motor. I didn't build it, so I'm not exactly sure what it was. It's a 383 that we borrowed from one of the guys at West Tech, and those are the only specs that they gave me. It was near 10 to 1. It had this big cam in it, and it had the Airflow Research 195 hits, which are really good hits. But equipped with the factory L98 tune port setup, you can see... We made peak torque below 4,000 RPM. Peak torque was over 500 foot-pounds, which is a healthy amount for a, for a small block for 503 foot-pounds for a 383. And uh, as we expected, the power curve kind of crested the 400 horsepower mark, but then kind of flattened out basically everywhere. The actual peak was at 5,000 RPM, and that was 411 horsepower. But you can see it stayed kind of right there for most of the curve and that's because it had such a it had good heads and a healthy camshaft in it which wanted to run higher than that but the long runner manifold just isn't tuned for that so this is the combination with the factory tune port motor or the factory tune port induction system let's take a look at our first setup and that was from edelbrock and basically that's an edelbrock replacement setup for the tune port we've got the um change in runners and you can see the Edelbrock setup picked up a little bit of power, maybe lost a little bit, uh, you know, down very low here, down in the 3000 RPM range. But equipped with the Edelbrock, the peak power jumped up to 428 horsepower, actually maybe a little bit more, yeah, 431 out here at the top. Peak torque was changed only just a little bit, uh, 506 foot-pounds of torque. So here's how the Edelbrock did. Let's check out the rest of our systems. Our next setup was actually a ported factory intake manifold, and we sent the lower manifold for the factory L98 over to the guys at Extrude Hone. Now, we'd work with those guys a lot, and they're great guys over there. We've used it on a lot of like long runner stuff, like 5 liter Ford stuff. It works very well. Now, if you're not familiar with extrude hone porting, what it is is basically silly putty impregnated with silicon carbide, and they force it through the passages using hydraulic rams. And because this is a viscoelastic polymer, <laughs> basically this stuff, when they force it through the passages, flows the way air does. And where it meets resistance, it basically ports where there is resistance. So it kind of goes in and sees where it should be porting and does exactly that. It works fairly well, especially on this long runner stuff that you can't get in and do conventional porting with. So we set the lower over there, and then we combine that with 
a set of big tube runners from TPIS and a bigger throttle body and a port matched uh, standard, you know, stock plenum. So here's what happened after we installed the ported extrude hone deal on here. We got a good jump in power. This thing made uh, quite a bit. Peak torque was up to 533 foot pounds. Peak power was up to 451 horsepower. As you can see, there were gains basically through the whole curve, which was nice. So the combination of the porting, the bigger throttle body, you know, I, I'm not sure about the port match plenum, the bigger um, tubes, the bigger runners, bigger diameter, more flow there, that definitely helped. So here's what happened when you put a modified stock one with, you know, good tubes on it. After running the extrude hone ported lower and then shared the TPIS uh, big tube runners, we ran the full system from TPIS, which included a dedicated lower. Now, this was not ported. It was an ads cast piece, but it had bigger runners in it um, from the casting. And this stuff has worked real well. We've run it a lot on stuff. Here's the TPIS stuff, just like with the extrude hone stuff, as expected. Um, the big tubes and big lower piece, big throttle body. Made more power everywhere compared to the factory setup. It made 534 foot-pounds of torque, 460 horsepower, and that we like the fact that it just basically gained power everywhere. But as you can see, and, and notice this from basically the last three setups that we ran that were all long runner, kind of standard length runners, it made the same shape curve. It just basically made more everywhere in this case, in the case of the extrude on one and a little bit on the Edelbrock one. But the shape of the curve is the same because the runner length is the same. Let's check out our next combination. After running the various long runner, you know, factory L98 TPI style intake manifolds, the upgrades for that, we did our first intake where we basically changed the runner length. And this was the Siamese runner setup from Arizona Speed Marine. Let's take a look at that. You can see that the Arizona Speed Marine uh, made a little bit more torque, 512 foot-pounds, but did it later in the RPM. And that's the function of the change in runner length. With that Siamese runner setup, it made 465 horsepower, but torque, you know, the, the curve still kind of dropped away down at the top, but it still made over 450 horsepower for a lot of the curve. So that's what happened when we changed the runner length. Now let's take a look at some of the other, what I call, you know, intermediate runner intakes. Our next intake came from the guys over at SLP. And you guys might remember these. These were on the limited production uh, Firehawk cars, if I remember right. Here's the SLP. And as you can see, it definitely changed the shape of the curve. It made less power down low than the real long runner stuff. It was a dedicated, uh, you know, two-piece casting. It had an upper and lower intake manifold. It even had the um, the caps over the, uh, you know, it was a dual plenum deal. It was pretty cool looking intake manifold. Take a look at the photos on it. But equipped with that SLP intake, the torque was down slightly compared to the factory one, down to 495 foot-pounds. But peak power obviously was definitely up. 468 horsepower and you can see the SLP stuff was better from 4200 kind of on out cool intake really hard to find <laughs> pretty rare but this was a cool test let's get to our next one this next intake manifold I kind of have a soft spot for it's an Excel Super Ram and it always does pretty well but like the Arizona Speed Marine and the SLP piece it's basically trading power because we're changing runner length. Now, back in the day, I had a 406 that I put together with a Vortex Supercharger on this Excel Super Ram, and it worked really well. It made lots of power. It's a good combination. Let's take a look at the Super Ram here. So, again, you know, a lot more peak power, obviously, than the factory L98 stuff, 479 horsepower. Peak torque was almost the same at 506 foot-pounds, happened a little bit later, but as you can see, the factory tune port stuff made more power up to about 37 or 3800 RPM, and the change was uh, you know, pretty significant down here in the 2500 to 3000 range. But out here past um, 3,800 RPM, the Excel Super Ram, especially on this combination on the 383, is a much better choice than the L98 TPI stuff. Super Ram is pretty cool. They look fantastic. Uh, they're <laughs> sometimes a little bit problematic with putting them together and having all the bolts stay in there and stuff. But, you know, I'm sure you guys know all that stuff. We redrilled a lot of stuff and, and changed the way that they um, 
were assembled back when we did ours, but it worked good on that supercharged combination. It, it kind of kicked butt. It was a nice piece. After running what I call the mid-length tune port intakes, like the Excel Super Ram and the SLP deal, we're going to jump over to a short runner run, which is the Mini Ram from TPIS. This is kind of the precursor to the factory LT1 intake. And this, this manifold has been used successfully on a lot of stuff. Those guys have made a lot of power over there. With that, and here's what happens with the Mini Ram, and here's where we start to see a big change in basically the shape of the power curve and kind of the reason that I went with the 383 and something that has camshaft in it is so that it would also work well with a combination like this. So the short runner Mini Ram intake is tuned to make power at a much higher RPM, which it did. It made over 500 horsepower, which is a, a good combination, it made 502 horsepower. And as you can see, the crossover point was 4,600 RPM, where the Mini Ram started becoming very effective compared to the Long Runner manifold. But if you look down below that, there's a big jump or uh, big loss in torque from that runner length. So again, you kind of have to decide where do I want my power? Do I want that 500 horsepower? Do I want the 500 foot pounds? You know, what kind of power curve do you want? And that's going to determine what kind of runner length you want. Let's check out our next one. After running the Mini Ram, we ran what is basically kind of the last of the uh, tune port type manifolds, or at least it has a tune port throttle body on it. It's the Holly Stealth Ram, which is actually much more of a converted tunnel ram intake with a box on it to allow you to run the tune port setup to run the two port throttle body. So let's take a look and see what happened when we ran the Holly Stealth Ram, which is a good intake. I, I like it. We've used it on a lot of stuff. And like the Mini Ram, it traded power, although not to the same extent. It actually has a little bit longer runner than the than that Mini Ram did, and it managed to make over 500 horsepower, or right at 500 horsepower, 499.2 or 3. Peak torque was 494 foot-pounds, and it lost power below... 42 or 4300 rpm compared to the long runner stuff so again like with that mini ram you kind of have to choose where do i want my power at do i want it at the top half of the rpm range do i want to have uh, you know do i want low speed or high speed power basically so this kind of helps you decide let's take a look at some of our carbureted intakes the first of our carbureted intakes actually wasn't carbureted at all. It was a single plane carbureted style intake manifold, but it was converted for fuel injection. It was a Holly single plane intake manifold run with a 4150 four hole throttle body and port injection. So let's take a look at how the single plane did. Like with the Mini Ram and Stealth Ram, the single plane intake was designed for power production at a higher RPM. So basically, again, you have to choose. Do you want all this torque down below 42 or 4300 RPM? Or do you want your power up at the up at the top, above that range? Now, if you're racing, obviously, you want it at the top. But if you're driving around, if this is a streetcar, you know, there's definitely a trade-off to be made here with this kind of intake manifold. Let's get to our next piece. Technically speaking, this final test was actually the first one that we ran, and it's basically a simple dual plane intake and carburetor, which was what we would typically run on a small block Chevy. So on this 383, we put a an Edelbrock RPM intake manifold. And a 750, you know, four barrel carburetor. Now equipped with that combination, this thing made over 500 horsepower, 502, 503, oh, 506.5 in this little spike there, although I think that's an anomaly, but we'll call it over 500 horsepower. Torque, 498 foot-pounds, but even with the dual plane, as you can see, there was a trade-off below 4100 RPM, although not as significant, obviously, as the single plane, because even if you compare a single plane and a dual plane, the dual plane is designed to run at a lower engine speed, basically below 6000 RPM compared to a single plane. So for this combination, a dual plane is probably a, a better choice. But on this combination, compared to the L98, it makes a lot more power above 4100 and loses a little bit of power below that. If you were choosing a carbureted intake for this kind of combination, you're driving it on the street, and even if it's a street strip deal like this thing, I definitely pick a dual plane in this combination. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about the giant tune port intake shootout? Here's what we found out. Even with a big motor and a big camshaft and plenty of head flow, 
the factory long runner style intake and the aftermarket ones, which were equally long runner, made peak power and peak torque at about the same place. That's a function of runner length. It has really very little to do with flow. When we added improved flow, like with the extrude home piece or the stuff from TPIS, we improved the flow rate, picked up power everywhere. But as you notice, the shape of the curve was basically the same. It just made more power everywhere. Now, things started to change when we changed the runner length. When we put on the SLP intake and the Excel Super Ram, we changed the runner length, we shortened it, we improved the flow, and it made more power, but it made more power at the top of the RPM range and started to sacrifice power down low. Now we saw this change even more when we went to the short runner stuff. When we went to the Mini Ram, which is kind of the precursor to the LT1, and also that Stealth Ram, which basically is a tunnel ram with a box on top of it. Also the single plane intake one. So when we put those on there, we started to sacrifice the low speed power a lot, picked up a lot of high speed power. Our combination made over 500 horsepower, which was a good piece. Now, as always, the dual plane intake with a carburetor on a small block Chevy, especially on a 383 stroker, works pretty well. In the end, you guys have to choose. Where do I want my power production? Do I want a ton of torque offered by the long runner stuff? Do I want a ton of top end offered by the short runner stuff like the mini ram? That's all up to you. I'm Richard Holdren, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Lots more testing coming up.